Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, now in the United Kingdom as well. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've had a chance to look further at this Marcus Maidana Adrian Broner fight, in part because I expect both guys to be on the world stage in future fights, right? Future big fights. But let me just offer another observation because it will affect how I pick those future big fights, right? When it comes to gambling, you've got to think about it before it even happens, right? Now, let me just say this. Brief analogy using other sports. I believe that there's some things that can't be taught, not even to world-class athletes. In my opinion, in basketball, shot blockers are born. They're not made, right? The way they see the world, the way they interpret the sport allows them to act quickly to block shots, right? A different athlete, let's say Blake Griffin, could be tall, could be athletic, could have the kind of hops that could actually win a dunk contest. But Blake Griffin averages less than a block a game. He's just not a shot blocker. That's not how he's built. That's not who he is. Now contrast that with Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans, right? This is a young guy who had a growth spurt late in life, right? Apparently it wasn't until the guy was in high school that the guy actually sprang up and became the height of an NBA center. Yet he's an accomplished shot blocker. Second year in the league, I believe he leads the NBA in blocks per game. Right? You know, you can't get near a lane against the Pelicans and not expect Davis to be up in your face trying to alter your shot. It's just how he's built. Now, you could get great shot blockers, right? You can get Mark Eaton, Akeem Olajuwon, you name it, right? Dikembe Mutombo. You could get all of these guys to try to teach. Blake Griffin, how to block shots. But blocking shots is a split-second decision, and it's just not wired into Blake Griffin's head. Now, those same guys, if they tried to mentor Anthony Davis, they'd have a lot to work with because Davis is already wired to block shots. I don't believe you can teach the wiring. Right? It's the same thing in track and field. Um, you say both Jamaican. I'm Jamaican just like you say both. But you know what? I could have the same coaches as you say both. I'm not going to run a sub 10 second 100 meter race, no matter how determined I am. Because I'm just not wired to run as fast as he is, right? His, his brain, his wiring is such that he can move his body faster than I can move mine, right? It's just like in baseball too, to name another sport. You see a guy who throws an 85 mile an hour fastball. You can bring in Nolan Ryan, Rob Dibble, you name it, Randy Johnson, Guys who hit 100 on the gun repeatedly, and they won't be able to take that pitcher from 85 miles an hour to 95 miles an hour. Now, maybe if these guys were talking to a flamethrower today, right, Chapman or someone like that, maybe Chapman, who already is throwing around 100 miles an hour, might be able to add a few miles per hour on his fastball listening to other guys with his gifts. But a guy who isn't getting the radar gun 
in that neighborhood is not going to benefit from the teaching. Certainly, he's not going to be world-class enough to compete in that category. Now, let's talk about Adrian Broner. I think Broner has great skills. I think Broner has a lot of talent. I know there are a lot of people out there criticizing him right now. I think Broner can wear the crown again. But, Broner doesn't fight on the balls of his feet, like Floyd Mayweather, like Ali, like Bernard Hopkins. Broner's in his mid-twenties. In my opinion, fighting on the balls of your feet and moving around the ring and being able to quickly react and be offensive while you're on the move is not something you can teach a guy in his mid-twenties, right? You're either a mover or you're not. Either you are on the go and your game is mobile or it isn't. Either you're Ali and you're on the move and Sonny Liston comes up and you're able to bang, defend your title, the famous phantom punch, right? Thrown on the move. Either you have those read reaction while moving, moves, or you don't, right? Too much goes on with balance, leverage, walking, right? You cannot tell an athlete who's a flat-footed boxer, predominantly flat-footed, hey, I want you to move for 12 rounds. It's going to mess with everything. His stamina, for example, his concentration, right? The way Floyd Mayweather is thinking for 12 rounds, the way Bernard Hopkins is thinking for 12 rounds, these are guys who move, and literally, if they see an opening on the move, can counter you on the move. I don't believe Broner will ever get that. Now, I've seen Broner move in fights. The Ponce de Leon fight. He's moving in that fight. But it's a different kind of movement. Ponce is stationary. Broner is hitting and running. Hitting and running. When he's running, when he's moving, he's not offensive. Right? Now that's very different. That's very different then let's say we'll leave Ali alone for a second let's say Ray Robinson against Gene Fulmer for the old-timers where Fulmer charges in Robinson is backing up and while on the move season opening he called it an anchor punch he knocks out Gene Fulmer right I know the Fulmer people will say we beat Robinson multiple times and that's true but just understand, Ray Robinson could literally finish you, knock you out while he's on the move, right? Whereas Broner is hit, and when he moves, he's hit and run, right? Understand there's a difference. Floyd, Ali, Ray Robinson, Bernard Hopkins, they hit you while on the run. It's not hit and run, right? Hit and then run. It's a more mobile game. It's hitting you while moving. Right? So, there's about a 10 year or so age difference between Broner and Floyd Mayweather. But in my opinion, Broner will never be able to move like Mayweather moved against Robert Guerrero. 
That's just not who he is. He's a great counterpuncher up close. Spectacular. But it's different counterpunching than Ali or than Floyd. Because while Ali and Floyd could counterpunch you up close, there was a movement dynamic to their game where Ali could dance behind a jab. Right? He could, you know, if he's dancing and you're trying to move to catch up to him and you have your guard up, but as you move, right, things change on the move. If you drop a hand trying to catch up to Ali, he could see it and while moving, quickly set his feet and hit you. That's not Adrian Broner. That won't be Adrian Broner. I don't care who his trainer is. He can switch trainers. I know Floyd Sr. has made some critical comments about Broner's trainer. Broner could get Freddie Roach, whose guys move and hit well. But let me tell you, you have to already be able to move and hit to then be a Freddie Roach fighter. Roach can't give that to you. He can't give that to you anymore than Nolan Ryan could get an 85 mile an hour fastball thrower to throw 95 miles an hour. It doesn't happen. You understand what I'm saying. Certain things you really can't change with a boxer. Also, Broner is lower volume, high accuracy. He's never going to throw the volume that someone like Manny Pacquiao throws. And keep in mind, Pacquiao now throws more volume than Adrian Broner. Right? You understand because when you say to a guy, hey, you need to start throwing volume, that's going to impact stamina. That's going to impact his defense. Broner is accustomed to having a defensive shell. It's hard to do that when you're throwing punches. So I made a video a while ago where I talked about a guy who I thought was bringing the fast break back to boxing. In other words, he's a guy who can move behind a jab. His game is mobile. He's a master at hitting you off rhythm. He's the lightweight champion Miguel Vasquez. And at the time, people thought it was preposterous. Look at the comments to the video online. I said I thought Vasquez would beat Adrian Broner. Later, I thought Paulie Malinaji incorrectly would beat Adrian Broner. Malinaji, a big underdog, lost by split decision. Right? Well, let me just say, movers are going to give Broner problems. What Broner needs to do is he needs to work with what he has. He needs to develop ways to slow down movers. Against stationary high volume guys like Marcus Maidana, and I'm aware many of you have written to me in the comments section to the video saying, Maidana's not that stationary. I would beg to differ. Right? Guys who are right in front of you like Marcus Maidana, who are high volume. Broner, who's never going to be high volume is going to have to figure out ways to slow down their volume. Floyd Mayweather has. What I want you to do is look at the combo box numbers for Mayweather fights. You're going to see that the guys he fights tend to have lower volume in the Mayweather fight than they did the fight before fighting Mayweather or the fight before that, right? Because Floyd, through spacing, through intelligent counters through hand speed reflexes right you name it straight right hands against Guerrero check left hooks against uh, Ricky Hatton um, you know <laughs> Floyd tends to slow down his opponent what you don't see in a Mayweather fight is an opponent teeing off with the regularity that Marcus Maidana was teeing off against Adrian Broner in his last fight. So, just handicapping Broner's future fights. If he's fighting a technician with a mobile game, 
Miguel Vasquez, Floyd Mayweather, possibly Keith Thurman, who moves a lot better than people think. He's going to be in trouble because someone with a mobile game is going to make him look like Sonny Liston. Right? Let me also make the point, too. You know, Liston actually had a jab that reached across the ring. Broner doesn't have that level of jab. So Broner really has to work on how he's going to slow down and corner faster opponents, especially faster opponents, and I'm talking about foot speed, who might actually have the edge in volume. Right? Keep in mind, a guy on the outside moving around who can pump a jab is going to throw and land more punches during the slow rounds. Right? So Broner, as great as he is, when you come at him, is going to have a problem when he's the one who has to do the hunting. Right? He was able to beat Pauli Malinaji. But Malinaji is not throwing the kind of power punches that some of the other guys who can move can throw. Right? So, in my opinion, if I'm Broner, I look hard at the film. I do think Broner is an elite talent. I do think he's one of the top 10 pound for pound in the sport. Looking back, the Madonna fight, and I thought Broner was going to win that fight, and I was wrong. The Madonna fight was a bad style matchup for him. But his number one challenge is going to be to figure out how to deal with guys with mobile games, right? Broner would look good against, let's say, Canelo or some guy like that who's a bit more stationary. But he needs to figure out how to look good against someone who can move. He also needs to figure out how to look good against a high volume guy who can come in and smother him. Right? He just lost to Marcus Maidana. I understand weight's an issue. Uh, but, you know, there are people out there like James Kirkland, like Alfredo Angulo at 154 pounds. Right? And if I'm Broner, in the background, in between fights, I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with people like that. Because there is a part of Hopkins' defense. There's a part of Mayweather's defense where they make sure they're not there for all 12 rounds to get hit because they can move, they can clinch, right? Broner needs to figure out that part of the game a little better. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say too, in reference to Keith Thurman, Thurman's legs are an integral part of his game. He's, he's fascinating to me because he's a mid-range hooker. But he moves. And he hits hard. He's been able to thoroughly outbox people like Zavik. Right? And so as you look at the landscape at 147, you need to understand if you're looking for Opponents for Floyd, and I think Floyd is considering a very dangerous opponent in Amir Khan. By the way, I'm aware of the fact that they're the same height, right? Khan's not taller. They're the same height, but I do believe Khan fights longer than Floyd, uses length more, and has hand speed, right? If you're going to be competitive against Floyd Mayweather, you're going to have to have foot speed, be able to move around the ring. You're not going to beat him by standing right in front of him like Broner did against Madonna. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.